Rod Pampling was the winner of last week's Shriners Open. Rod Pampling, you know, Rod Pampling. If you haven't heard of Rod, that's okay. He wasn't even supposed to be in the tournament. A clerical error that bumped the field from 132 to 144 players allowed Pampling to make it into the field, and he made the most of it. Pampling wasted no time at the opportunity, firing an opening round 60 to sit atop the leaderboard after day one. By the time Sunday rolled around, that lead was Lucas Glover's. One shot in front of Pampling. But a bogey from Glover on the 17th hole on Sunday and a long 30-foot birdie putt from Pampling on the 18th hole on Sunday sealed the victory for Pampling, his first in 10 years on tour. First win since Bay Hill in 2006, and arguably the sweetest after spending the last two seasons on the web.com tour and having to go through their four-event playoffs just to get his PJ Tour card for this year. With the win, Pampling now has full PJ Tour status through August of 2019. Pampling finished the week at 20 under par for the win, while American Ryder Cupper Brooks Kepka came in second at 18 under. Lucas Glover came in third at 17 under, and Francesco Molinari and Jeff Ogilvy rounded out the top five at 16 under. Now on to news and notes. We'll start with the LPGA Tour, a place you would think would be free from the circus that is the 2016 election, but that's not quite the case. Martha Burke, a political psychologist and feminist best known for her run-in with former Augusta National Chairman Hootie Johnson over male-only membership, a rule that was overturned in 2012, is back in the news. Speaking on an impending decision whether or not the 2017 U.S. Women's Open will remain at Trump National in New Jersey. Now here was the quote from Burke. The USGA refuses to budge. One reason may be the players themselves. Most, if not all of them, are members of the Ladies Professional Golf Association, and they're acting like good little girls and remaining mute, or saying they don't see a problem with their most important tournament being held at a course owned by the country's leading misogynist. Pretty strong words, but Burke is not wrong. Rewarding the type of behavior that Trump has been parading around for the last year, two years, his whole life really, just sends the entirely wrong message. And it sends that message not just to the women on the LPGA Tour, but women all over the world. Standing in the way of moving the tournament, however, is the fact that it's only eight months out, and that creates a logistical nightmare. Not to mention the fact that sponsors have already been paid, deals have already been worked out, and those would be really hard to renege on this late. And with the event being held close to New York City, that should significantly bump interest in the event. Plus, we know how litigious Donald is. This one remains to be seen. It's going to be really interesting how it works out. Those saying they can't move the event and those saying they have to move the event, neither one is really right. However, there is some precedence already set by the PGA Tour on the issue, as one of their biggest events, hosted at Doral every year, was moved because Doral is owned by Trump. It was now moved to Mexico, coincidentally enough. So we'll see what the LPGA Tour does. Now, there are also quite a few storylines ongoing on the European Tour. I'm going to delve into the lighter, kind of more fun ones first, and then we'll get into the serious issues. Remember last week when I told you Matt Kuchar had a hole-in-one, and he should have got a Cadillac, but the hole was listed under 200 yards, and they had a rule that if it was under 200 yards, nobody wins a car, and he said it was the saddest one he's ever had, and he felt robbed, and blah, blah, blah. Well, there's an update to that story. It looks like HSBC is going to do the right thing and grant Kuchar any Cadillac that he wants from their 2017 line. Kuchar had this to say in response. Certainly this is no longer the saddest hole-in-one of my life. My nine-year-old son recently asked me if I've ever made a hole-in-one to win a car, and I'll be happy to tell him now that I have. I guess all's well that ends well. Do you also remember the bottle smashing challenge that turned into a drone smashing challenge I showed you a few weeks ago? And the week before that, they had a par 3 tournament under the lights? Well, this week, the festivities continued. Lee Westwood, Danny Willett, and Andrew Beef Johnson took part in an actual drone challenge this week. The goal? Transport your ball from the tee box to the hole in the drone. Drop the ball as close to the hole as possible. Let's take a look. We're going up to the top of the house and they're going to fly down to here where we are now. They're going to turn it round, go over the water, and then they're going to take it the ball in the drone and drop it close to the flag stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, West A. 20 feet. Very well here in Beauty, please, that's good. Oh, 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 oh. The ball's off. Lee Westwood is the champion. Now the third strange story to come out of the European Tour this week 
is actually one that most golfers can sort of relate to. It actually has to do with the yelling of four. Their situation is actually quite the opposite of the usual golfer though. Now, a message posted to players at last week's Turkish Airline Open pointed out that the most primal of etiquettes, the four rule, was not being withheld. Four! Four! And if it continues, there will be punishments handed out. Hard to imagine hitting a ball 300 yards into a crowd of people and not yelling for. There were actually a few serious storylines to emerge out of the European Tour this past week, and I'm going to start with Masters champion Danny Willett. I mentioned last week with Henrik Stenson and Rory McIlroy pulling out of Turkey, that gave a huge opening for Willett with three events left in the race to Dubai. Well, it didn't go as Danny had hoped. He finished the week tied for 68th ahead of only four other professional golfers and was unable to make up any ground on the leader Stenson. Since winning the Masters in early April, Willett only has two top 10s worldwide and took to Twitter to vent some frustrations. He also went on to say, to be honest, I don't really want to be out there playing golf. While he may not want to be out there, there are two events remaining in the race to Dubai where he sits second behind Henrik Stenson as I mentioned. So if he can manage to get through those two events, he is in line for a huge paycheck. Rory McIlroy was also making headlines and also for some of the wrong reasons this week. First, it was after Rory withdrew from the Turkish Airlines Open last week before he was set to make a hefty appearance fee. Now I spoke last week about Rory withdrawing from the Turkish Airlines Open and this caused quite a feud over there. But this week, we heard from Ahmet Agaoglu, the president of the Turkish Golf Federation, on the matter. Here's what he had to say. I do not see pulling out of events as the right approach to take. I was a little bit surprised and disappointed to learn that Rory was pulling out in the media. He did not contact me. Agulu also went on to say the following up of players withdrawing in general. Over the last few months we have seen there is a lot of difference between top golfers and top athletes with some golfers missing events because of a few mosquitoes. True sports people rise above this. Now to me, this screams sour grapes. Rory and others did not pull out because of a couple mosquitoes. Let's make that clear. They pulled out because of, among other incidents, a terrorist car bombing in Antalya, the city where the event was being held, just days before Rory was set to arrive. Now, this just doesn't look good on anyone involved, but it wasn't the only controversy Rory found himself in. McElroy also turned some heads after speaking to a golf podcast on the selection process for the European Ryder Cup team. Now, here's the quote from Rory. I'll let you read it. But really what he's saying is, it should just be the best 12 players on the team from Europe. Doesn't matter what tour they're from, as long as they're European, the best 12 players is what they want. Rory used Paul Casey as a perfect example of what he was talking about, as Paul Casey was ranked 13th in the official World Golf Rankings ahead of the Ryder Cup, but was unable to make the team because he didn't have his European tour card. Now, in theory, Rory is right. The team should have the best players to make the best team to give them the best chance to win. In theory. The issue, however, is what would happen to the European Tour if this were actually the case. You see, making players keep their European Tour cards in order to qualify for the Ryder Cup is a main incentive for players to stay in Europe. Now, if that necessity were waived, players would be free to play wherever they want, mainly the PGA Tour but also the Asian Tour, any tour they feel that would get them the most points or the most money, having no allegiance to the European Tour, something that would have zero benefit to the European Tour outside of a slightly better chance of winning the Ryder Cup every two years. Okay, now back to the PGA Tour, where the headlines weren't as plentiful, but a nice heartwarming story certainly emerged. Tommy Morrissey, the five-year-old golf prodigy that was born without a right arm below the elbow, was on course at the Shriners Open, hitting the opening tee shot and showing a couple pros how it's done. Take a look.
Pressure's on. PGA Tour also welcomes a new commissioner this week as Jay Monahan replaces Tim Fincham after a 22-year tenure at the helm. Monahan, just 46 years of age, will not take over officially until January 1st, but with the 2016-17 season already well underway, you can guarantee he will certainly be a busy man until then. Now, in my opinion, a younger, more in-tune commissioner is a good idea for the PGA Tour, as they've been slower to adapt to the technologically savvy ways of our society. And finally, we wrap up news and notes for the week with what else? A Tiger Woods update. Okay, stop me if you've heard this before. All right, I, I guess that's not really possible, and you've definitely heard this before. Tiger, once again committed to play in next month's Hero World Challenge in Bahamas. Now, I guess this was the most formal of his announcements, but until it's the week of and Tiger is on site, I think we've had enough of these announcements. And this is a little strange, but Snoop Dogg, yes, Snoop Dogg, was asked about Tiger returning to the PJ Tour, and as you may imagine, his response was a little different. Here it is. You think, you think you're Tiger Woods is my friend. Yeah, I'm a close friend of Tiger Woods. Are I you? love Tiger. You understand me? I'm the dog. I've been the lion. You understand me? And I'm real close <laughs> with the Tiger. So it's a beautiful thing that Tiger Woods is coming back, man, because the sport of golf is garbage without him. But if nobody, you be... nobody watches it. The ratings went down. Mm -hmm. It ain't fly as it used to be. Right. You understand me? He, I mean, he was the flavor. I mean, he was the seasoning salt. Right. It's just like some shake and bake chicken now. You understand me? Oh. This week, the PGA Tour is in sunny Playa del Carmen, Mexico. It's the 10th anniversary of the OHL Classic at Mayakoba. Graham McDowell is your defending champion after he won last year in a playoff with a birdie on the first hole over Jason Bone and Russell Knox. The Chameleon, as the golf course is called, is one of the shortest on tour, and while it may not have the biggest star-studded field, there are some intriguing names to be had. There are also five Canadians in the field, the same number as last week, when four of five of them made the cut, but the highest finish was Adam Hadwin, who finished tied for 27th. Now, my picks last week, let's just say they didn't go as well as the week before. Kevin Nong, Patton Kazire missed the cut. Chris Kirk tied for 61st. Scott Piercy tied for 24th. And Ryan Moore was my top finisher. He came in a tie for 15th. Now, this week, I'll look to get back on track with these five players. Derek Fathauer. Derek finished fourth here last year and in three starts this season, he has placed third, 15th, and 36th. Emiliano Grillo, last year's Rookie of the Year, has played in three events so far this season, finishing 11th, 17th, and 26th. Now, a short course should benefit Grillo as he doesn't hit it very far, but is deadly accurate. My third pick is John Ram. John finished 10th year last year, pushing him to a really strong breakout season. Ram has finished tied for 15th the last two weeks and should set up nicely for another good finish this week. My number two pick, Keegan Bradley, finished 8th in this event last season, and in three starts so far this season has finished 6th, 7th, and 22nd. And my top pick for the week is Russell Knox. Knox lost in the playoff to McDowell last year at this event, and in two starts so far this season, has finished 9th and 10th. All right, that's it for this week. Rod Pampling earned his first victory on the PGA Tour in over 10 years last week in Vegas after a clerical error by the PGA Tour allowed him into the field, which he shouldn't even have been in. Martha Burke had some strong words for the LPGA and the USGA as tensions rise over a decision whether or not to allow Trump National to host the 2017 US Women's Open on the European Tour Kuchar got his Cadillac, we had some more fun with drones, and players are being encouraged to yell for. Also on the European Tour, Danny Willa and Rory McIlroy are making headlines, but for the wrong reasons. And on the PGA Tour, Tom and Morrissey show the pros how it was done last week. Jay Monahan replaces Tim Fincham as commissioner after 22 years in the spot. And players make the trip to Mexico this week for the OHL Classic at Mayakoba, where Graham McDowell is the defending champion. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, click that like button right down there. If you really liked this video, click subscribe. And please leave some comments in the comment section. Let me know what you thought. I'm RJ McCullough, and I'll see you again next week.